Hi, uh, my name is Risha Ravi. Uh, I'm one of the um, recently uh, got placed with uh, Collaborate, and I'm here to give my uh, testimony and my journey uh, toward you know the program. Uh, once I, uh, you can ask me any questions after uh, you know uh, I give my introduction. And I said, uh, my name is Sirisha Ravi, and um, I have joined IBBC, uh, the I mean data analytic class in November 2019, um, and then I started um, after doing my uh, data analytic class. I joined IBBC in February uh, of 2020. Uh, once I finished, uh, once I joined, I also. At the same time, I got an opportunity to join the internship program uh, with uh, Ali, and uh, I started in in March. Uh, and then, uh, um, then I I did my two projects uh, um, in uh, in an internship, and also did my two personal projects that I've completed. I did uh, complete phase two. Uh, I'm working on my phase three, uh, and um, I'm also also one of the first um, first uh, one of the first group that uh, that um, the collaborate has uh, launched. That was the first launch was in September uh, 2020, and um, but uh, even though I was the first person to be launched, uh, first first group that got launched uh, in September. But I have not started applying on um, maybe around um, mid November uh, or end of November. I started applying seriously for the jobs and I've got an offer in March and I joined a company here uh, in Dallas. Uh, this is a small pharmaceutical uh, specialty drug uh, pharmacy that I've joined and I've, I'm the only person who hired full time. Uh, within the company, uh, the rest of the contractors. Uh, so it's a good opportunity. I got placed as a reporting developer, even though I was more SSIS and uh, data warehouse um, a person, but um, I got placed as um, SSIS report developer. Uh, I do a lot of, um, um, my work uh, is more on the SQL, SSIS and SSIS. Even though I'm a reporting, I still do. Uh, SSIS. Uh, so this is my journey uh, and I'm very thankful for Collaborate giving me this opportunity. Um, I heard Collaborate through a friend. Um, she um, uh, She's a, like a family friend uh, through my husband's, uh, uh, one of his colleagues' wives. Uh, she joined uh, about three months before me and she kind of said, uh, recommended the program and uh, that's how I got into it. Um, so, but it's, it's good. Um, I would say uh, you need to have a good determination uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to work hard. It's nothing is easy. Um, you will have some, uh, once you start applying, you will have some disappointments, you'll have some hit and go, uh, some chances, but uh, I would say not to get discouraged. Um, everything happens for a reason, you know. But um, if you work hard, uh, if you work through the program, uh, do your projects, that's your experience. Uh, doing your projects, uh, doing it right is your experience. Uh, so uh, anybody has any questions or anything? Give me one second, please. Good morning. Good morning, Gladys. How are you doing? <laughs> doing good, doing good. Yeah, so how many interviews did you go to until you hit your your interview that gave you a breakthrough? Uh, so I did a, a lot of first level interviews. Like, you know, I used to like, whenever I apply, they say, are you ready? Then I would just go and get it. The first few interviews were like, I didn't know what they were asked, was not prepared. So I would not count those interviews, but I did more than 20 first, uh, first round interviews more than uh so and then uh out of that i had like 10 of them came to second round and out of that the five came to the final round so yeah 
I mean, I, I did a lot of uh, first round interviews, like, you know, they, uh, I, I applied a lot more than like, um, I would say I applied about 75 to 100 jobs. <laughs> so I used to apply um, from LinkedIn, I used to do LinkedIn dice, and also recruiters used to call me every day. Uh, my goal was to at least apply for five to 10 jobs. Okay. Uh, so that, I mean, I had a goal that I used to do and that's how I applied. And I, uh, whenever I had um, a second phase of interview or if I'm doing an interview with a big company like Infosys or um, any of those big contracting company, I would do um, a, 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 a I mock interview with a mentor so that I'm, I don't have that pressure because uh, whenever you go with this company, they ask from basics all the way to the end. Sometimes they ask you, they give you a table and they tell you to give you, uh, uh, like, uh, tell them the code that needs to be done on that. Okay. They tell you to write the code uh, in the chat. Wow. Okay. Uh, so there were a lot of, I mean, I had a lot of those kind of queries because I applied a lot of SQL jobs. So okay okay thank you no hello hi can you hear me yeah i can hear you yes my name is bryce okay my question is also related to interview like uh my first question like how was your confidence level like when you were going to interview did you feel ready there were some questions like if there's any tips that you can say wow all those uh interview video that we recorded like did all of yeah, those so the basically uh, I would say it depends on how you prepare your resume so I uh, already had an IT experience before I have uh, I worked in a um, city group for uh, more than five years uh, as a QA analyst uh, come business analyst so I had that experience in there and then I uh, so when you have like a, a already IT experience, um, they'll ask you a lot of different questions. They'll ask you uh, the most uh, like um, they, they they never started basics with me, uh, but there were very less basic questions. They had a lot of like business analyst questions. Uh, they uh, they are they they, uh, they have like how do you do your analysis? Like if they give you uh, like um, what kind of analysis do you do when before you start a project? Uh, where do you go? Uh, how do you do it? And all those kind of different questions like so. Uh, at the okay. starting, uh, when they started asking me those questions, I was not prepared. Uh, so I, I would like um, uh, just tell them random things, <laughs> which is not correct. <laughs> But uh, I used to write those down and then I used to ask my mentor and other, uh, you know, uh, whenever in, uh, in any of the uh, sessions, I used to ask a lot of questions uh, and then um, write down the answers. Like, you know, sometimes some of the peers would give the answers, sometimes the mentor gives the answers. So I would write down and then uh, do some research on that and get prepared for those questions. And uh, always like uh, when you're um, when you're going for an interview, uh, grab a pen and a book. They're okay if you're writing down the questions. They don't mind. Uh, none of your interviews. You don't have to write the whole question. They can ask like what topic they're asking, uh, but uh, they they know that you're prepared. So that's that's one of the things too. Okay, she came prepared for the interview. So you always be. It shows that you are always prepared for whatever meeting you come because you have a pen and a, a pad with you. Okay, thank you. No problem. But uh, always, uh, if you don't know anything, you can just say that uh, you don't remember on top of your head, but uh, you, you know how to do it, but you're kind of anxious, you know, right now because this is, you can say this is my first interview or, you know, whatever comes in. Uh, they don't mind, they say take it, uh, you know, um, uh take your time or take the you can come back to the question again so it will hey, sh like. sherry Hi. 
congratulations on being placed. I, I, I remember how devoted you've been. I have a question about uh, your background as a business analyst, because that's that seems to be coming up a lot. Do you mind just mm -hmm. kind of giving a breakdown of how you explain, how you answer the question about how you you uh, you 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 get your sources when it comes to when you, as a business analyst, how you obtain your sources yeah. from the the business from the stakeholders, whether it's the columns, how you're going to build the columns, uh, how the tables are going to be. Just give us a, a, a breakdown of how that that you answer that. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I would say like, uh, we do have a business analyst in my company. Uh, that's how I started. But for some projects, uh, if it's a small project, like uh, we do not have, then I would step up as a business analyst, uh, depending on which, um, what is the, uh, the project is based on. So if, for example, my project, if, if, I'm, if my current company, I'm a pharmacy company, right? Uh, we do not have a business analyst here, uh, so we just uh, do a, uh, the projects are through uh, ticketing system. So the project is assigned to me by my project management. So since I'm new, right, I do not know a lot of things in the, in the tables or anything. I do not know where to go and grab all the stuff, but I, I need to do act as a business analyst to gather all my requirements to do right now. So the first thing I do is um, I go and read the documentation they give. And then from there, uh, they are, now they want to do is they used to do manually update certain things and they want to automate those. So I know there are some already um, written queries. So I went to the queries, I looked at it and I, then I started asking like, okay, which part do you want to automate? Where, uh, what kind of uh, like process are you looking for? Uh, do they want it to do it all in SSIS or they want to do a, a store procedure? I, I mean, all these questions are there. So you go back to the, either you go to your project manager and ask them, or you, uh, if your project manager says, uh, because every ticket is owned by a business person. So, if your project manager knows those questions, they ask, they answer you. Otherwise, they said reach out to the business. So you're going to compile an email with all your list of your questions, and then email them and ask them like if they have uh, if they can answer in an email, or you can they they'll say okay, uh, let's meet. Or, you know, do you schedule a meeting and then you you they give you answers based on that. You go back and forth until you understand the requirement the sources, uh, what they're asking for and what is the output. And once you do it, then uh, you can come back and start uh, doing a, a technical documentation or uh, in start coding and then also do a technical documentation that you need to submit. Did you get the- uh, Yeah, yeah th thanks for that. That, that gave a- uh a good outline of what you answer with these questions really appreciate yeah, it I mean, you, you can uh, um, you can the same the same thing right uh you get a project so the project there you're acting as a business uh, analyst there too so you have a project so you you have open source code but you don't know what is it so but you know that uh the documentation that um the requirement right what is required for that's a re requirement documentation Based on that, if you have any questions or anything, you go back to Abdullah or Ali, right? And tell them this is what they're asking for, right? It's the same thing. Well, thanks for that. Oh, no problem. Uh, uh, Sherry, uh, how many interviews did you have before you got placed? Um, I had more than 20, 25 interviews. Um, a lot of them were Zoom. Uh, it, within, um, I mean, I had a lot of like, a lot of them I applied were contracting companies. Uh, so usually there were two tire or three tire companies. So I had like, uh, before even I got interviewed with the client, I had interviews with the, the contracting companies. So there were two levels of interviews per 
um, contact. So I, I did a lot of uh, those kind of interviews, even before I met the client. Hi, Sri. Good morning. This is Angita. Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, so while on your interview, like they might have asked you, like, why did you change your, you know, job from QA, BF to the uh, data analyst? So mm -hmm. what would be the good answer for that? Uh, okay. Uh, so the, the thing I said them is I was always interested in coding and I do, uh, I used to do, um, I, um, Sybase, not SQL, but uh, we had a data warehouse that I needed to grab my um, loans. Uh, I, I worked in Citigroup. I was a mortgage uh, QA, uh, more as a UAC analyst. Uh, so I had to do a testing, right? So um, I, depending on the code that comes in, I used to go and grab the, uh, the loan numbers or the, the, uh, the property address or whatever I needed uh, from my database. So I had to write SQL queries for that. So, I, and I told them like, uh, I was, uh, once I got hooked into the coding, I was always interested in it. I wanted to learn more of it. Uh, that's how I, uh, when I got an opportunity with Collaborate uh, giving me a training and getting placed, uh, I joined with them. I've been there for so long. Okay, thank you. No problem. Hello. Um... My name is Linda. I just want to ask you, um, how similar are the interview questions to what we practice in IPBC? Uh, they are very similar. Like, uh, you know, um, with, uh, and I said with Infosys, um, uh, TCS and all those, they started with this, uh, whenever you have interview, it doesn't matter if you're doing Power BI or ETL, SSRs, anything. They'll start from basic uh, SQL questions and they go one of the, depending, uh, um, depending on, they have a certain set of questions they ask. Like they ask 10 questions from SQL, 10 from SSRs, SSRs, and then probably, yeah, because your resume is, is set up in that way because, you know, SQL, SSRs, SSRs, Power BI, or ETL, whatever that is. So they start from basic. They st start from like, what, uh, can you tell me what is the difference between ET, uh, delete and rotate? Do you know your joints? Uh, do you, um, you know, uh, what is the stroke procedure? Have you used it? How, what is your complex stroke procedures? What is it, like, how do you do um, uh, error handling? All those kinds of, they, they ask them from basic onwards. If you're going for a contracting company, they start asking from basic onwards. Okay, thank you. But um, I always uh, tell you that you guys need to, um, uh, I mean, uh, prepare from basics, go back to your basics every day. Uh, whenever I have like um, the whole three months that I've, uh, um, I was uh, preparing my interviews, I used to, uh, I have a like, a, I did a word documentations for all of them. And then I had a, a document that has just questions and then those are linked up to the, my other documentation. Uh, so I would have like, what is the difference between delete and concate? And then if I click on it, it opens my doc, uh, the notes documentation. So I used to go every day with those set of questions. Like uh, these are the questions that I took from um, uh, with the Automark interviews, not somewhere else. There's all each Automark has like 10 or different, there are some, uh, that repeats in, uh, but there are very few that are repeated, but all the, so I used to go and do Automark. I used to write all the questions down, do our research, get my notes prepared. And every day I used to go and uh, from starting from the first uh, SQL questions all the way to the ETL, I used to uh, go over one over the other, like, okay, this is it. This is what the lead is. This is what the difference is. This is a stroke procedure. What are the advantages of stroke procedure? Like I used to go and read it, like start from the definitions with example, advantages, disadvantages. I used to uh, do it every day, uh, either in the morning or evening, whenever I have time. Thank you. Hi, I have, I have a question. Have you ever, um... Have they ever asked you how you troubleshoot or how you um, um, 
still near a stop procedure. Um, how would you answer that? I actually went online and uh, I couldn't find a direct answer. Uh, so, you know, debugging a stroke procedure is very hard, right? Uh, so you can, um, there's a lot of different ways, but uh, I would say the easiest is uh, if the, there's a, if you're doing uh, a stroke procedure, it's already there, right? Uh, it, it, it depends if you're doing from a job perspective, if it's a job is failing, then you need to do uh, analyze why it's failing on a job, right? Stroke procedures are also scheduled jobs. Uh, so you need to ask them if they're asking on a job perspective or is this just executing a stroke procedure and it's failing. If it's on the job, then you're going to see why it failed. Uh, there's other things that you need to do on the job, right? Uh, on an agent level. But if it's the stroke procedure that you're going to do, you can do, uh, um, you can always do uh, error handling, you know, the try catch with the error message inside yeah. the stroke procedure. That, that gives you exactly what, uh, which line of error that happens. Oh. And you need to uh, give all those messages uh, on the, in the try catch. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah we um, use a lot. Uh, in my uh, because I'm a service, uh, we use a lot of stroke procedures, and I use a try cache a lot of times with all the error handling messages because uh, that's where whenever it fails, it gives me that uh, output where it, which line it failed, what is the reason, everything. I catch that error and just print it out. So okay. even if it fails in the job. Uh, when uh, in the job that when you get alert, it gives that error message in there. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, okay, uh, have you ever come uh, across the questions where they ask you, how do you troubleshoot uh, a slow running query in SQL without using the profiler? Because the profiler shows uh, the result, but does not show you the cause of the delay. So. Have you ever come across a question like that during an interview? Uh, yes. So the first thing I would ask them is, um, so is it just a query or a, a stroke procedure? It's just a query. No, it's, right? just, it's just a query, not stop procedure. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I would say is I would go and look at the columns, if they're selecting all the columns or if they're selecting only certain columns that they need. And I would also uh, say that if it's uh, if the query has a join, and uh, I would make sure that they are doing the join on the right columns, you know, um, not just um, just doing a join. The join has to be on the right column, whether it's in, uh, index, and it has to be on the indexed column. So if there's no indexing on the column, I would create indexing on them. Uh, and uh, uh, you would also uh, say that uh, you. The other thing uh, you make sure is uh, if the query is taking, if everything is good, there's nothing wrong within the query, but it's just taking time, right? Uh, because in if it's in production, in production, because there are a lot of uh, other, uh, it might be a memory issue, it might be uh, anything else. So you can say that you would create a, a view for it, or uh, you, you can write a stroke procedure for it. That way, when the stroke procedure, when you execute the first time, it's it's there in the memory. And then if it's repeatedly, it depends on how much time you're using that query, right? If you're only using one at a time, then you can use a view. Um, and uh, you can also uh, create a materialized view, do a research on that. Uh, materialized view is that it stores the value within the table, whereas the regular view does not store the value. Whenever you call the uh, view, uh, then it um, it, uh, it executes the, uh, your query and then gives you the output. But with the materialized view, the, uh, the values of the tables are stored within the view. Uh, so just do, uh, do some research on that. Okay, thanks. No problem. Hello, Sherry. This is Yemi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Okay. I just want to ask you, how do you 
prioritize your work on, the, on daily basis? And uh, what do you, it, um, uh, so what it looks like? See, the prioritization of your work, usually like when you have your daily scrum meetings, right? Uh, in there, they'll tell you which is a priority, okay? Uh, like um, we, uh, in, in my current company, I just give you a pharma example. So we have, uh, we do a specialty of drugs. So we do create a lot of service, uh, uh, provide a lot of service to the aggregators that is the different companies. Uh, so what kind of drug went in, how many we shipped in. Uh, we also do a lot of um, uh, research on those. Uh, so if there's any, uh, any uh, adverse effects on those, we do a lot of research on, on those kind of things. So we kind of do a, like a research on the diseases with the drugs, with the different pharma. So we do all those things. So every day uh, we need to send some of the reports to the different uh, aggregators, the industries like uh, we might do Pfizer or, or uh, Lilly or any of those different companies, we need to send them reports. So we do a lot of service reports and then uh, we create a new ones as the new drugs comes in, right? So uh, we get a priority. So every day, whenever there's a new drug is coming or anything, uh, uh, there's a priority that, that, that um, they'll say, this is first priority, this is second priority, this is third priority. Depending on what your work is you're doing, then if you have all three of them with, uh, on the priority basis, you need to ask your manager or anybody, which is, which is the first thing that you need to do. So always uh, the, you'll know which is priority in your scrum calls. Uh, if they say like two of the, your tickets are the priority, you need to be done by end of day, then you're gonna ask them like, which is the first one you need to complete. Okay, thank you. Always your core point is your your uh, your manager to ask for Makes the sense. Makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, is I don't know if this has been asked already, but is your environment designed for self service? Uh, what do you mean by self-service? Where the, the end user can create their own reports, having access to the data set. Um, no, well, we create the reports for the end user. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about the, the environment, uh, the kind of, uh, if you have workspaces, if you have like uh, business units or anything like that, like how, how's your environment set up? Um, our environment, um, this is a very small company uh, and they de do with a lot of drugs. Uh, they do a lot of service reports to, um, to send back to the companies. Uh, so um, most of them, uh, we, uh, we are trying to uh, move our database to uh, Azure. Right now they're in the process of doing it. Uh, so that is done by different IT team, uh, but my is, creating reports and sending them. So we do a lot of reports uh, in SSRS. We use a lot of SSRS um, uh, packages uh, to automate those process of sending those reports. Uh, there are some reports that are flat files. Some of them are uh, ex uh, Excel that are um, internal files that are given in the uh, each business uh, user profiles. Uh, they have every uh, certain folders that are there, then we just push those uh, reports into their personal folders. Uh, so if they're internal, uh, internal files, then the end user or the business have there in the personal folders. And we use a lot of linked reports. Uh, so um, because of the multiple uh, um, people use different things. So we uh, use link, uh, if the report is there in one, then um, we uh, send it to, uh, we create just a link uh, so that the other uh, folders also have the same uh, report. Uh, other than that, we have a lot of text reports. These are all sent to SFPT. 
uh, through um, SSIS, uh, we created a, a called a file sender package that takes all the flat files that comes into a certain folder and then depending on the naming convention, it just pushes to the aggregators uh, depending on the names and all that. So uh, we use a lot of different, uh, um, uh, you know, um, there are a lot of SSIs, SSRs. Some of the SSRs um, reports are also, uh, um, what you, um, access through SSIs. To, uh, the package to send it to the different aggregators, the third party. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Hi, this is Sampa Gale. So actually I have uh, one quick question. So are you working as a mantis right now? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. just started. <laughs> yeah, so I see, uh, I think you're my mantis right now before I have Anthony's. I don't know okay. whether he's working or no. Um, I, I think I think he's still working as a mentor. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. And I have other question too. So how can we get a certification from the Microsoft? Because right now what we are learning uh, that old session is turned okay, to the so, new rule-based uh, certification yeah. exams. So right now that 70 yeah, that's for um, 61, they are, that are all are retired since January, yes. end of January to 2021. So I think- Yeah, we'll they are, uh, so for the Microsoft SQL certifications, those are all expired. So mm -hmm. the new one have not, they have not created any new certification for those. Uh, but uh, just keep a lookout on the certification side whenever they have a chance, they are just revamping because a lot of the, a uh, lot of them are moving either Azure or Informatica, they're moving to cloud-based, right? There's no yes. general sequence. So they have started opening a lot of uh, Azure certifications, Informatica, and those kind of certifications. Uh, you can do any of those uh, that's already there. Uh, but when you come to the third phase, that's where you start uh, learning Azure, and then mm -hmm. there's a then you can do an Azure certification. Uh, yes. So right now I'm preparing for Azure 900 and uh -huh. Azure 300. Uh, that's also upgrading now 303 and 304. Yeah. So that's two exams has to be done to do the uh, Azure architecture. So. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, they're just, re uh, most of even the Azure certifications that they are there right now, they're trying uh -huh. to revamp uh, to get to the new certifications. Uh, some of them are getting, are going to expire and they'll have a new certifications, but just keep a lookout and if you're um, already um, paid for fees or not, just keep a lookout to see when those expire. Yeah, I know some of them are expiring in June. Uh -huh. The old versions, the new test is already there. So just want to make sure that you are preparing for the okay. right one. All right. Thank you. No problem. Uh, sure. Uh, your your job? Did you got your job through the uh, temp agent, or it was a direct hire? Um, this was through a recruiter. A recruiter. Uh, a recruiter approached me for this job. Um, they approached me like in in January. I didn't had um, uh, like in first week of January, but I didn't hear them anything back until February, mid of February. I just had. This was the most easiest interview that I had. I had a, that, um, so this was, as I said, this was a full time. Uh, so I had an interview with uh, my manager and one of the directors. My first interview was with both of them. It didn't last more than 20 minutes. So I was not sure if I hear anything back from them, but after a week, uh, they schedule another one. Uh, this one is just the schedule because one of the other directors wanted to talk to me. 
And that's the reason they scheduled it. They just asked me uh, two questions, that's it. They wanted to know if I willing to join right away uh, within the uh, we, uh, like um, two weeks notice that I, and then they said like, uh, if they give me an offer, would I accept right then and then? And the one of the directors wanted it because I, um, I have uh, the other thing that helped me secure this job is was my bachelor degrees. I have done a bachelor of pharmacy from India. So they wanted me, uh, they, the other question they had me is why did I switch from uh, pharmacy to IT field? That's it. And they, they I, I got an offer letter by end of day. So. Uh, that was blessing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this was the most easiest interview that I had. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. You never know what's in your... <laughs> It all depends on luck. It's it's your hard work. Luck is, should be there with your hard work. Okay. So, what's your advice for those of us who have had a previous interview, but uh, we haven't he heard from them? Like, okay, if he's gonna be the founder, a suitable candidate, but they still haven't get back to you. They just put in blank. And uh, do you think, like, after having about four interview, and you are pretty sure, like, maybe two or three? or two out of those four interviews, you felt like oh, you were you did a little bit better. What's what advice do you think or one could still proceed, continue to apply because oh, you could still hold on? You know, um, I always think, uh, you know, I always go like, uh, whenever I did an interview, if they asked me about 15 questions and I answered all 15 of them, something or the other, then I felt like I did good. But it depends on the interviewer prospect, right? If that way you answer, where you're confident, where you're hesitating, where you're giving the right examples, uh, you know, how you have, uh, it, because it's all Zoom and everything, they see your micro expressions and everything. So it's always, and then, uh, so always keep smiling whenever you're asking, even some difficult questions, you don't know anything, just keep smiling and answer those. But uh, most of the interviews they look for how confident are you? Whether even if you're asking, answering a wrong question, uh, but if you answer in a confident level, they, that's what they're looking for. How confident are you in doing your stuff? You know, they they don't. Uh, most of them have. I know, like um, most of them don't look for whether it's a right question or wrong question, but the uh, answer. But they look for how confident are you. Um, if you're um, if you're able to uh, you know if if you know you uh, the way you answer depends a lot of how your confidence level. If you are uh, anxious, that's different. But your confidence your confidence level when you're answering something it should be like around nine. You know, I, I mean, I did, I, and I was saying I did a lot of interviews. Uh, a lot of interviews they gave me a positive feedback. They said like. Uh, they like me, they're going to contact me for the next interview, and they're going to do schedule with the client, but I never heard anything back. Mm. You know, and I go back to the recruiters, email them, and, uh, you know, as I'm like, okay, this is what's happening, you know, they said they like me, they're, they're going to schedule another interview, uh, that was their final interview, what happened, and then I, I don't hear anything back. So there, there are certain things that happens, but uh, they might have uh, other candidate already placed or they never tell you what's happening inside. So just don't get discouraged. Uh, there are certain people who give you good feedback, you know, keep you in a loop. There are certain people that don't keep you in a loop. So it depends on the recruiter company and also on the interviewer who's doing it, whether they want to keep you in it. But, um, Always getting a positive feedback is good because it gives you, um, encourages you to be a more confident and you're, you ace your next interview, right? And how long were you on the board stage? Like how long uh, did it take you to get a job? Um, so I, I was a 
Yeah, first batch. I said I was the first launch. Uh, my batch was the first launch. We were 10 people in there for the first launch. Uh, so it was in September. We uh, end of September, 20, I think I remember it must be 21st or 23rd, somewhere around. We did our first launch, mm, like the basic launch, like how we did. But we took our time because ours was the first time. So we started in uh, October. The, I started getting, um, you know, um, the the salesperson started sending me the resumes and all that but actually i started really applying was in uh end of november i was not prepared i mean that's the other thing is too like i have not started preparing for my interviews until september that's where i started doing my i mock interviews i started doing auto mock interviews uh so it's kind of late in the game but um i have not started until there like my goal was getting like a uh, more practical uh, experience because I was more worried like um, not on the theoretical part, but on the um, practical le level. So if I if I get placed that I need to be more, um, um, you know, um, confident to do it. Like I don't want to come back and say, oh, Mika, I'm scared. Like Ali, I, I don't know how to do those things. But I wanted like, because I hear a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, things that they don't know what to do once they're placed. My goal was to, once I get placed, I don't want to come back and, you know, the, at least first first two months, I should be able to flow through the company without having any uh, come back and say, I don't know how to do this. So I was basically more uh, looking for things like, okay, if this happens, how do I solve this? If this happens, how do I solve this? I was lo more looking on that. Like right now I do a lot of uh, store procedures uh, that already exist. Uh, I add new port in there and I make sure it's working right, right? So um, but basically I, I, um, I improve my SQL. Uh, I have a strong SQL base uh, that helps me a lot. So, <coughs> Uh, uh, I see some people have uh, sent me some questions. In. Um, okay, um, based on my experience, uh, I would say, um, you know, you see, you should have a strong basic uh, levels like uh, query levels, uh, different drawings, able to uh, you know, when you when you do your drawing, uh, we don't tend to look at the, I don't know, but most of the people like, if you have a first table, right, and when you're doing a drawing, you should have retain the same records, right? So you make sure when you're doing your drawings, when you're doing uh, your functions or CTs or any temp tables, everything should work, right? Uh, your code should work, it should not fail. You, you, when you execute it 10 or 15 times, your store procedure should not fail. Um, I do a lot of merge statement here in my company uh, because we add new records. In, in test, we need to add new records, but in production, it's already, it's exists, it's uh, done automatically. Uh, but in, in your test environment, you need to add records. So you do a store procedure for that and you do a lot of merge uh, statements. You're, if you're executing 10 times a day, your merge statement should not fail. Yeah. So uh, make sure that uh, you do all those things and, and uh, your basic level of then that would be my most, seek for all the jobs, SQL is your basic. So be strong in your SQL. Um, my salary, <laughs> uh, I got a good salary. Um, and I said, this is a full time with a paid vacation and all that I do have about, um, five weeks of vacation. So I'm not five weeks, sorry. I uh, have a month, uh, like nearly um, four weeks of vacation. So um, I the only thing I negotiated was vacation, nothing else. I took the salary they offered, but the only thing I negotiated was on my vacation. Uh, for SQL uh, coding, I, I think it's hacker, uh, hacker 
uh, oh, what is it? the hacker rank. Uh, that's where I um, I did a lot of um, my querying, uh, the SQL queries there. The other thing that helped me is uh, in there, it has older version SQL Server because um, in practically, we are we are using uh, SSMS 2000, the latest version 2018 and all that, right? But when you're in real, real life, their production version is older. Very rarely they use current version. So unless it's a new company, but uh, our bigger company, they don't use the latest, uh, they don't upgrade to the latest one. They do a really slow process of doing it. Uh, so right now, my company, they use 2012 um, and 2014 in production. So they're older versions. So some of the uh, newer um, functions are not there. So it a hand and helped me doing all those things. But uh, practicing your code there, it helps. And uh, basically when some of the interviews, uh, some of the recruiters, what they send you is, uh, they send you, most of them is a hacker rank. Um, they send you the interviews over there, like some of the queries over there to do it. And then, uh, so that helps. Practicing helps. Okay. Um, okay. Uh... And, uh, for the people who asked me for the LinkedIn, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have not, um, um, I have not gone to LinkedIn for a long time, uh, but I will do, uh, I'll approve, I mean, I, I will go and, you know, um, um. Okay, uh, sure. do you uh, uh, know, like, if, if you were asked a question that, like, saying, uh, which parameters are used to increase memory? Have you ever come across uh, interview questions like that? Uh, memory in, uh, in where, like in? Uh, Parameters using an SSI, uh, SSRS. Uh, no, uh, not in SSRS. No, we don't use parameters in SSRS. In SSRS, you do parameters, but those parameters are for uh, moving your code from, you know, uh, if you're moving your code from one environment to other environment, it's easier you're creating parameters over there. But see, any of the uh, memory issues, usually memory issues, you can say that uh, in my current company, all the memory issues are uh, done by my DBA, that is admin, database admin. Uh, I do not, um, uh, I, I'm not involved in those things. Okay. Because most of the, this is uh, the memory issues and all that, that is more uh, done by DBAs. They have more access to it. Okay. Um, if you want to look at more, uh, look at, uh, try to do some research on DBCC. Uh, those are some of the uh, commands that are used for, uh, look for more on the memory side and stuff like that. Okay, DBCC, uh, right? Yeah, they, I think they are more on DDL language. So some of them only, um, database admins can have access to it. So you, you can just uh, say that. Um, I uh, uh, Most of them, if anything, uh, based on memory and all that, uh, as a developer, I do not have access to that. Uh, my DBA has access. If I have any issues with the memory, I just reach out to them. I'm still trying to. Um, so for, uh, so if you're doing on a contracting base, uh, depending on how many 
years of experience you put in, right? Um, if you are looking for a beginner level to an intermediate level, um, I, when I first started, uh, I started asking around um, uh, from 43 onwards till I asked till 55, 60, depending on uh, what kind of position that is. But um, basically, uh, whenever the uh, you know whenever the recruiter calls me and they ask me like, what is your salary expectations you're looking on? Uh, I would say like, what are they offering me? Uh, but uh, I would say, what is the highest price are, uh, like on W two or is it ten ninety nine? Whatever it is, like, what is the maximum they're offering for this job? I would ask them that. I don't. I, I want to say like. What are you offering? Now, I would ask them to reply for that question instead of you giving an answer because sometimes you quote less than what they're offering. So, I always, uh, uh, even in, if they're replying through emails too, that you can just ask them. There's, they don't, uh, the recruiters, they don't mind asking. Sometimes uh, if they are the view too, too low, if they say it's only 36 or 37, you can say it's kind of too low. I was more expecting around 45 or so or 43. Uh, just give them, uh, if, uh, if they don't ask her and if they're asking you or this, give a price range. Don't give a, like a single number. You can say I'm looking around something from 43 onwards to 50. Uh, something in between or something like, a, it, you're very good with that. Oh, 43, don't you think of 43, uh, that could be around about $20 uh, dollars an hour. Is that not too small for an uh, ETL? No, there? no, uh, see, uh, this is a recruiter, right? I'm not talking about okay. the um, collaborative one. The collaborative one, when you put, when you do, uh, so in the collaborative, when you're doing uh, in the, um, where, um, what is that? Uh, In the website, when you go and fill up all these things, when you put the number, it already calculates your twenty percent and gives you other number. But if you're doing a recruiter, recruiter is uh, when they tell you that is your go, that is your salary per hour. After the cuttings, they give you like um, if they if you say if for suppose uh, I'm giving you a call like and I say I have a job with this client and so and so my rate is 43 that means that is your final offer uh, if I say on W2 make sure remember W2 the only thing is they um, they they cut a, um, they reduce uh, the 40 out of 43 they reduces your uh, federal income tax your if you have a state income tax and then your social security those and they give you the rest of the money. But if, if, you, if you're doing on 1099, all of, uh, then you need to pay your uh, federal tax, state tax and 10, uh, every, social security, everything is on you. You need to uh, make sure you pay those things. Uh, do you mean uh, C2C? Uh, C2C is all the same thing. You are going to pay uh, your federal, state and uh, social security. Uh, sometimes you might have to pay double because your employee is not paying, then you are paying for yourself and for your employee. Advice is better to go for W two instead. Yeah, of I mean, you know, uh, you ask them if they're they're asking, they're saying, "Oh, this is C two C." You tell them like, uh, "If I want a W two, what is your offer?" Right? If it's uh, mostly, they usually give you a seven dollars difference for seven dollars going with them is better than you hiring a accountant and doing all the stuff. Uh, $7 less on W2 is better option. If it's more than $10, then going on CTC or uh, CTC is the, that's how I feel like, but it's each person perspective. Right, because some people like they, they like doing all the stuff. <laughs> Hey, Sherry, I have a question. Um, yes. When it comes to CTEs, right, do you mind sharing a, a, an, an experience within your environment 
of how you've you've used it? Um, most of the time I use CTEs if I'm uh, building a query to look at my output, but um, I did use CTEs a lot. Uh, in my last project with the internship, we used a lot of CTEs and TIM tables within it because um, instead of using uh, uh, like, um, because of the calculation part, we had a lot of calculation part. So we did use, uh, in, uh, but not everybody likes CTE. Uh, if you do not like CTE, you can always use TIM tables. There's no, there's, it, it's the same thing, right? But. It depends on uh, how comfortable are you. Okay, so I, I kind of get different versions of like CTEs because some people say, okay, they use it to simplify uh, queries. Mm. And then uh, like in your situation, you're talking about using it versus using a, using a temp table versus using a CTE. Uh, what is the most common use from your experience for, for okay. CTEs? So while you are using CT, uh, you go with the advantage and disadvantages, right? Because that's how you based on whether you want to use CT or not on your query. So CT is only used when you are doing a, uh, like it's more for small sample of data. Because if you have a big database, if you have like 300 million rows, using CT will take a lot of time. And your query slows down. Right, so at the time, it's if you're depending on what you're doing it, of what, of how you're using it. If you're only using it to sample your data, view your output, uh, to look at your uh, output, and then go with your coding, then I use CTE. But if it's a big, uh, if I have a million records, and if I'm start using CTE, then it slows my output. All right. So I use stem tables in, in that case. Oh, okay. It, it, you can, um, so look at the, uh, you know, disadvantages, advantages, that gives you help like to ask, answer those questions. The, the reason why I bring up CTE, because I, I have a, a relative that's like a data scientist. They've, they've worked with SQL for almost like 20 plus years, but they had no idea what a CTE is. Yeah, so not just everybody like... use CTE. Not everybody use CTE. That's what I'm saying because CTE is only uh, used only small amount of uh, data sampling. If you're um, if you're only doing for a small amount of that, that it's more CTE and table variables. Uh, table variables are same. The only difference is we are not declaring variables here with CTE, but it's it's the purpose advantages and disadvantages are very similar to those. So why don't you use table variables? Because you have you have to because it takes time. I mean, it uh, it takes time to process your query, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, CT is does the same thing. If you have a big data, then it's 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 not optimized to use CT. It's to get more optimized to use ten tables. All right. Thanks. No. But I use a lot of CDs when I'm trying to, uh, before I write my code, I want to look at the output of how to, uh, how the output looks like and all that to proceed. I use CTEs to do that. So uh, have you uh, ever applied for ETL jobs whereby you, you have a more uh, SQL questions than the uh, ETL? Oh, jo good food hai wahan se, chicken lete aana to. Hum bhi aayenge chicken khane. Hai na? Huh? Hum bhi aayenge chicken khane. 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 Hum bhi aayenge chicken हमारे पास कुछ नहीं लगा
अच्छा और कुछ ज्यादा मत लेना क्वेश्चन because you need to have sql background because you use lot of sql queries right to build up your ssis package or uh, informatica anything you need to have sql so SQL, they do ask sql questions and i did apply for uh, data engineering uh, data mm, there's a like um, there are different names uh, given they, even though it's a etl job they give like data engineering data there are signs uh, the different things but uh, look at the job description before you apply and see how confident are you on their asking you those questions so always go in the description and uh, you can always um, uh, depending on but prepare, be prepared for anything because when you tell the first thing they ask you tell me about yourself right and you tell me about yourself you're asking you're talking about sql ssis ssrs and whatever that you did right they're going to be asked those questions basically because whatever you said you know in sql they're going to start from sql on okay that i answer my uh, your question oh yeah yeah because when you say tell me about yourself that that's where the uh, some of the interviews they go from there onwards based I'll on your experience uh, so that's actually apply for a job and uh during the interview uh when they ask me about tell me about you say up to uh introduce myself uh the first question they told me that yeah it was an etl job but uh uh we use my uh, mosquito and uh i like okay <laughs> yeah i mean see a lot of like um and i was saying this is a small company right there's a there's a, there's a there is, this is a startup company i mean it's, even though it's a 10 years old company but they just uh, uh it's been like uh last 4 or 5 years they started you know building their data warehouse and all that stuff so they are very free, uh so it's a basically a starter company the company that are right now most of our my code the etl process is done in sql so whatever i i don't i'm this well less percentage is done on uh, ssis or integration but most of that is done on sql so you do need to have sql background for etl process Yeah. But it seems to like have a mild SQL because they uses a different uh a different tools to for their transformation. They don't even use SSIS. No, that's what I'm saying. I use SQL. Everything is done in SQL. You don't need to do SSIS for ETL. You can do SQL uh you can extract from SQL, you can do transformations from SQL, you can uh do um you know push it to the uh your dimensions and everything is in sql they use different store procedures you know everything is done through sql you can execute you can schedule those jobs and then they are done just for the store procedures Can I answer your question? Yeah. But uh, do you have you? Uh, what about if they ask you about? Uh, I know usually recruiter ask this about your data set. Uh, yeah, recruiter ask uh, what? Uh, how do you get your data set? And uh, uh, how many? Uh, uh, they're trying to ask you what is the volume of the. 
the data you've worked on, you know, but I usually come up with the, like I get mine from a uh, different source, the OLED TP, you know, XML, Excel, you know, yeah. that's where. Mm -hmm. So are uh, you are reporting or ETL? Like, what yeah, ETL, yeah, ETL, yeah, ETL, yeah, ETL. ETL. Mm -hmm. So when you are in ETL, you can say uh, your your sources. Uh, if uh, are you going? Uh, okay. The other question I would like ask is, uh, what are you, how are you saying that you you're saying that um, you're a developer? Uh, you do you maintain those packages or you are trying to build them? Yeah, I maintain and I'll try to do them. I'll okay. Do so when you're when you're saying uh, maintain and build, but when when you talk about build, you can say that my first project uh, I was working for so and so company. I don't know if you're giving a referring to mortgage come or the project that you're doing, but you can always go back and you can say without saying the word mortgage in there. You can say uh, in my first uh, job I had. Um, for this company that I uh, I was contracted to, they had uh, different sources that we had to extract data from. Uh, some of them were already existing. Uh, they have already a database, OLDB database, and then some of the data was coming through a third party that was given to us by XML, uh, and they push it through, uh, you know, to a third party, and then we had to extract that data from that source. Uh, and then you can say uh, we also had an um, ex, uh, Excel format too. So I had to compile all these together and then I created. So depending on each project, this was my first project. Right now I do maintenance. So most of my uh, theater, that maintenance or if I'm building a new fact table or anything, my data database is already existing, right? You can take from OLAP or OLDB, uh, whichever is um, there from. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what, uh, how, whichever the first company you're preferring, you can substitute the mortgage with the company that you're doing and the thing there, but uh, you, you can even say without the company name, you just say that, but you don't need to say it's a mortgage, but you can take yeah, that example. A lot of us talk about mortgage when we speak with their recruiter and uh, so you I don't try, have to, I say try to create my own storyline now. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. You don't have to say mortgage. Without saying mortgage, try to practice that. You can use that for anything else. Okay. I mean, that's how I, I prepared for uh, without saying mortgage because I did not say mortgage is my first company. Because you have, when you say mortgage or real estate or anything, then you, they, if they ask you which is the client, then it's, it, it gives you a hard time. Uh, what do you mean uh, various amount per hour for any tier tool application? Obi? Uh, negotiation, um, it depends, right? Um, if um, I know Power BI, right? I can give you an example. If in Power BI, you're only doing front-end Power BI, that means you're only doing uh, reporting, but you're not, you're not responsible for your data that comes through. You have somebody else give you data, you're only doing front-end reporting, then you get a offer from, 36 onwards, $36 per hour onwards. But if you are a backend and front end, right? If you're a Power BI, you're doing your own SQL queries or you do your own, uh, you bring your data set, you do all those things that you need to do and then also prepare, then you're, you start from somewhere around 65 onwards. Uh, same thing as um, ETL, right? If in ETL, if you know um, Informatica, if you know Azure, then your starting price goes up. If you're just saying, I know SSIS, then it starts from the lower price.
So always like when when your recruiter calls you and they tell you ask you what is their price range, you ask them what is their offer for that position. It depends on each position, depends on the company also. And also it depends on how many tiers they are. The, if the recruiter company is, if they have a direct, um, um, they, they get di um, hired directly, right? Like um, direct client, then it's, you get more, you have a chance of getting more. But if there's a two layer, if they are doing a subcontracting, then you get more or less. So it depends on all those things that going on. Did I answer your question? Uh, I can um, stay for five more minutes and then I, so any last questions? Give me one second. Uh, anything else? Uh, please share your email address if that's okay with you. Uh, yeah, it's my first name, last name at gmail.com. Uh, let me type, let me give you That's my email address. I'll try to answer as quickly as I can, but if you reach out for any questions or anything, but I'm available for those. All right, thanks you. Uh, it's nice meeting you always. If you have any questions, please, uh, you know, you can email me, you can, uh, if I come any other Saturday, I can answer more questions for you guys. Thanks so much for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. All the best. Thank you, Sheree, and all the best to you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.